Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is live. This is Vesna right here. She got an awesome idea, a vision for artists to be able to have a platform to talk about themselves, to talk about their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, um, to understand again in the mind of artists, which a lot of artists, you know, at times don't want to talk too much about it, but I ain't got nothing to hide because this is all natural for me. So I can talk all day with you this art, you know. Yes. The show King Fade, that's the brother, that's my big brother. He's the one that got me um know, knowing that I didn't know I, I did art. Hanging with him. That's him right here. Show King Fade. And this is my man Knight. Show King Fade. Shout out to him, man. That's my big bro. Um, you know, hanging with him, I was able to, you know, start to just, you know, get into art because I paid him seven hundred dollars for a tiger piece. And his tiger piece <laughs> So this is what the tiger piece looked like, you know. Okay. The tiger piece. Oh, I see, I see, I see. yeah. I paid him seven hundred dollars for that, right? And he did an awesome job. So I said to myself, "What can I do to make this mine?" Because I paid for it. And I'm like, man, that means that it's money and art. So I was like, let me get into this. So this was back in 2012, 2012, and I started doing it from there. But I've been an artist, but I didn't know since I was six years old. And tell us more. Tell us more. You told us the wonderful story yesterday about that your mother was uh, sending you to the museum just so you can get out and do some what? stuff. That, that, that my, is very, very cool story. It's crazy, right? My mom's, let me show you something. She worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, right? And that that's a whole story by itself. And so, you know, coming from the projects, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, looking out the window all the time, dreaming. My imagination, that's what I was doing. Right right in front of the, 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 the gates, you know. She basically is the one that had me come there because that was like an after-school program. The U.S. Center at the Met, shout out to U.S. Center at the Met. That's every Saturday we used to go there. So I was just doing it, you know, but I was really there for the cheeseburgers. <laughs> it was, that's how I got big, but um, I was skinny back in the days. Um, but she's the one that had us go there because that was her babysitter. That's how, while she was working, we would actually go and explore the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So that was like a whole, whole different story right there. And um, I didn't know how much it had to affect them until 2012. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. You know that actually when we are six years old, um, whatever you do when you're six years old, this is the sign what you're going to be doing in, like all your life. What is your kind of a destiny? So, so this is like amazing, just confused, right? <laughs> that you are connected with art, like yeah. right from the beginning. It's amazing. But so I, is your mother an artist? Did she have anything to do with art? My mom, she actually had some. Um, but she she retired from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I remember as a child, I was always saying it was like, "What your mom do for a living?" I go, my mom's a floor technician. They're like a floor technician? I said, you don't know nothing about that, my man. She was, she was a custodian. <laughs> she worked as a custodian. But I didn't tell people she was a custodian. I told them she was a floor technician, you know? Because it, it, it's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of work to do all that, you know, and clean the floors mm -hmm. and the bathrooms and all mm -hmm. that. And, you know, mm -hmm. put food on the table, you know, single-parent mom, you know? So, right. So, but um, what about your other roots? Like, I understand that you were born in a different country. Uh, I've heard, like, wild stories how people bring them, like, how it affects them, how it's, like, important it is to have those, like, diverse roots. Tell us a little bit more. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. I still got my family there. That's, that's where I'm from. I'm from Trinidad, so that's what we do. Chini, chini, chini. Chini, chini, chini. Chini, chini, chini. <laughs> chini, chini, chini. Oh, my gosh. Bye. It's like, big up some of my West Indians out there, yo, all right? But, yeah, so I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, and um, growing up in the South Bronx, it was a whole different beast, you know what I'm saying? And that that also had a part, you know, in my in, in my creativity, too, you know? Yeah. It's like the colors, like, it's the colors of the country is something important, right? Like, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe uh, you're, like, a unique person, you... I understand. I know that you don't see the colors; you're colorblind. But uh, the way you, the way you paint, nobody can tell that. You actually put the colors uh, amazingly, very, very, very good. Like if I wouldn't know, I wouldn't say. But <laughs> yeah, Tobago has like um, it, it's a very colorful country. I don't know how you 
text you, but somehow you maybe sh- like somehow you suck it in, like maybe through your skin. <laughs> and <laughs> what's happening? You know, it's crazy. When I create, I I, I consider myself like the MacGyver of art because. <laughs> For example, I'm working on a new piece, right? And this is what I'm doing. Do you know what this is? It is a piece of a car? No, no. What is it? Oh, my God! <laughs> wow. I'm flipping it because as an artist, everything to me is a canvas, as you know. It's true. Because you're an artist as well. That's your work. And so pretty much... I'm taking that piece to a whole different level. This piece is going to be displayed. I'm not done with it. <laughs> but this piece is displayed at the Holland Center coming up in February for Black History Month. Stay tuned. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to put the promotions out there. But yeah, we're going to see what you're going to do with this. I'm it's going to be a something I love, I love, I love pull a clock, right? <laughs> a whole different level. And I think it has to do with... And I know it has to do with the fact that my mom's working at Metropolitan Museum of Art. That was our way. That was free babysitting for her. And that was our way to get those cheeseburgers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah, cheeseburgers. Yeah, all that. <laughs> that had an impact on my life because going there every weekend up until college. Every weekend. Yeah, every weekend. Every weekend. Every weekend. Wow. This is education. This is like really good education every weekend. And now the thing is, I didn't know that was education. I was just going in for the cheeseburgers. I didn't know that was something that was going to be a part of me until years later. You know? Amazing, um, yeah. And I look back at it, and it's just like, wow. I still to this day remember walking through the museum, all right? I and and I'm working on another piece right now, another piece. But I, for the 150th anniversary, 150th year anniversary for the Met, because that's what it was for 2020. But they carried on into 21 because of the whole pandemic and everything. By the way, like talking about the stars, do you believe in it? Do you believe in stars? Do you believe that I mean, in astrology? I'm open up. I see a lot of things, a lot of resemblance in certain people based on their birthday and stuff, and. You know, but at the same time, I still give people that benefit. Like, you know, maybe that's not them. You know, I don't want to just overanalyze everyone, but I just want to look at it as like, hey, you know, I see, oh, well, you know what? This person is born here and they've been acting this way. Maybe that is right. But, you know, I don't really like, you know, do, but I I, kind of pay attention to stuff like that, though. Yeah, I started paying attention at the beginning of this year, uh, last year, actually. I, I tried um, I tra- tried magic, magic mushrooms first time in my life. And um, everybody who knew astrology warned us, this is the worst day possible, you shouldn't do anything, sit at home. I went to the different dimension right away, did several predictions to my husband. It was an amazing experience. And while it was in that experience, I, I realized that that was, um, like, that was the best day for it. This is was the day when the planets lined up. So this happened the best possible way. <laughs> Did you have anything like this? I, I'm, I'm a natural high by myself, okay? I mean, when, when I, 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 I smoked before and, and did all that, but it took me to a whole different place like Fridays where I was like, no, I was bugging out. I was, I was taking it to a whole different level because like, you're seeing different things and, and, and it's crazy. I, I played basketball. I was playing basketball. So after, before I, you know, played basketball, we, 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 you know, we smoked. I remember being on the court, and I was like, "You can't have it. You can't have it." And you and these guys is around me, <laughs> and I'm like, "You not gonna get the ball. You ain't gonna get it." And you and I just threw the ball. <laughs> I just threw the ball. I said, "No, no, 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 no. Take me out." Take me out. But but when it comes to, like, creativity and when it comes to, like, my personality, I don't do that because now I'm in boxing. You know, we all try different things. Yeah, because you're a sport. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, no, right yeah. now I don't mess with none of that because I have a natural high. And when I... Because <laughs> you're always in this condition, right? By yourself. Exactly. 
When I do, <laughs> you don't need it in your city, yeah. When I do smoke, I'm like this. It put me to sleep. It calmed me down, and I'm just like, oh no, I'm I'm just too, you know, hype, you know, so animated. So my creativity, my my, all, it's all natural. I can I can do so much when I I don't have to do all that, you know. It's amazing. It's amazing how artists by itself can be so open. Do you consider yourself that you like an open person, like you open universe? Yeah, you know, I close my eyes sometimes, and when I'm painting, it feels like that. It feels like it's an out of body experience for me. I don't, yeah. I don't realize that I'm painting like I'm in a zone, and then when I stop. Mm -hmm. And I take a step back. I'm like, I'm shocked. I'm like, did I do that? Did I do that? So I'm shocked when that happens, you know, because I just let, like, like my favorite artist is Jackson Pollock. And I have to say, when I was going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, every time I visit, I had to stop and sit in front of one of Jackson Pollock's works. Oh my gosh, that's what it is, right? You know, like when I when I was child, for me, um, Monet was like like first impression of me, like Monet. Okay, so this is impressionism, mm -hmm. and yours was Pollock, and you you can tell, you can tell, like when, even when you watch the videos, you your videos, you, videos, mm -hmm. you like walk slowly around in the street, <laughs> around the <laughs> canvas, and like, <laughs> the colors. We <laughs> came. It became a part of me. It became yeah. a part of me where I think it reached my soul where I, I, I too can't explain. Like he says, I just let it happen and, and, and that let it take over. And then he, that's how it comes to him. I, I do the same thing. And yeah. it's one of those things that it goes back to the schooling with, with, but I didn't know I was going to school. But what, what happens when a child is around different environments? They pick up. It could be a negative environment. It could be a positive environment. Whatever environment they're in at a young age, they're sponges. And they grasp. Yes, it's true. Doing. It's true. So that's why children imitate what's around them. So that's why it's important to set that foundation Whereas stuff that can make their minds go to a different level at a young age, you know, because being negative is not the way. We got a lot of negativity out there already. And we're here to shine the light to the world so people could know that, yo, light is the key. And, um, you know, I had a lot of adversities. Growing up in a project wasn't easy. It felt, it felt like prison sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the thing is, yeah. if I didn't have that experience, if I didn't go through that, mm -hmm then I want to be who I am. You know? Yeah. What you learn yeah. is you learn to grow. And the key is to grow in life. Not to have that negative mentality all your life. But there are times where you got to handle business, you got to handle business. But the key is, that's not all the time. There's a time and place for everything. So yeah. I'd rather be the up than the down. You know? Even when, I'm yeah. down, even when I'm down, I feel like I have to be the up. That's who I am, you know? And as an artist, all the experiences I experienced as a child growing up to the college, leaving college, Jane Adams in the South Bronx. Represent Jane Adams, y'all. Shout out to all my people from Jane Adams. You know, I ain't forget Prospect Avenue, you know? Um, leaving college in the Bronx. You know, I'm from the Bronx. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's all life to make you who you are. But the key to this story is that a lot of times you don't know the, 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 the actual gift you have inside of you. You've been walking around and you don't know that you got some million dollar gift inside of you. But sometimes it takes situations and people to come in your life to expose that. Now they didn't, like my brother, he didn't teach me how to be an artist. What I do, I can't be taught that. It happens naturally for me. I didn't go to art school. You got a lot of these artists that's in art school or they graduate. I'm not that type of artist. I'm I'm coming. No, you're not. I'm coming from from the deep within that it takes it to a different level, and it comes easy to me 
and I just do it. I, and, and the thing is, I don't know how it happens. I don't. It's called naive art, um, but you, it takes like a, a child to, to be a naive artist, to, to be able to create it. To be a naive artist, it's, it's, impo it's almost impossible when you have <laughs> education behind your shoulders because school puts so much pressure on you sometimes. And, um, and um, school sometimes, uh, the, stronger the, the stronger the school, the more, um, the more shape it gives to the artist. So an artist needs to share all of this shape, you know, and, and find, it, find your own. And um, in your case, you don't need to shell anything. You just need to be yourself. That's yeah. all, right? Just, just express yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did this piece right here. Me and my big bro Shirkings. He did the airbrushing. Mm -hmm. That's Biggie. Beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful. I did, I did everything. All of this right here. All the sequence. I did all that. And I, you know, I, I, yeah, I noticed that you um, incorporate a lot of uh, different materials um, in your art. How did you come to it? How did you click in it? That's where it goes back to saying I'm a MacGyver of art. <laughs> I, I just, I have a piece I'm working on, and I'm like, I'm sleeping. I'm waking up in the middle of the night. I wake up at four in the morning. I go back to sleep, and then boom. Wait a minute, I know what I could do. So it just comes to me. That's the craziest part. I, I'm really pulling from some third dimension, I feel. A lot of my work, you know, yeah. a lot of my work yeah. has pictures and faces sometime in them in which I didn't tend, intend to do. It just mm. shows up. You don't, you don't like, you don't think about it. It just, um, like, you don't plan it, but it comes in. Yeah. Like personally, I find this way the best way to to create. It doesn't matter what you plan. You're gonna be free, and you're gonna allow yourself to um, to do whatever your soul wants, right? And the thing is, the thing is this: as an artist, when you start to think, sometimes you overthink. And and I agree, I agree, yeah. The thing I agree. Is, you know, like a lot of pieces. Like I've come to my um, my own sense is that um, you don't overwork it. You you need to find time when to stop. That's the first thing. You don't overthink it. It needs to be energy. Like, but the, the the key behind that is though, as an artist, you have to always evolve. You have to always put yourself to another another inch another level where. I can do anything my mind put put my mind to. There's no limitation. And that's the creation. Yeah. No, to have no limitation is making a way to never have to be limited to anything. So it's no way out of that to make that to have no limitation. When you limit so did you have it in life? In something in life when you overcome limitation, put something and just did it. Not only the paintings, but in your life. In yeah. I tell you one. I tell you one thing. I'm a. I'm second born. My brother's first born. But I act like I was the first born. I got my life <laughs> before my brother. Gosh. To this day, today's his birthday. Happy birthday, bro! But I got my license before him. I was 16. He was older than me. Cause I was like, I want to prove a point that they always treat the second born worse than better. The first born better than the first than the second born. And you know, um, so I got my license. Everybody thought I was crazy. Like, yo, how you gonna get your license? You gotta get your permit on. I did all. That. I got it at sixteen, but he got a car before me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got a car before me, but just for me, because just for me to do that, I had to put my mind to it and say, I don't care how, how young I am, whatever. I was driving before I was sixteen. But the key thing is, if I could put my mind to something, I could do anything I want. Anything I could do. That's the key, you know. That's the best. That's the best attitude. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Like a lot of people actually lack in that um, to put your mind and just achieve it. Um, it's just you don't you don't see it that often, and I can feel like your energy. You you really 
you like um i can do it you like a child i like i don't know how to stop myself that but yeah so i'm a tiger i'm a tiger you see the tiger a tiger is free. are you tiger are you were you born in a tiger year well no i don't even, you asking now i don't even born a tiger year but i'm a tiger <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, it's all that's 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 all around, right? That's it. Because the whole purpose of a tiger for me is that a tiger would never get defeated by his foes for a lack of strength. A tiger is resilient. Tiger is strong, yes. Strong. Tiger is strong. And and it 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 kind of, I think if any animal, that's my spirit animal, a tiger. Um, so you did that tiger image too on your um on your t-shirts, right? Yes. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm this is yours that you painted it, right? Hand hand painted it, yeah. Are you yeah. printing those um those t-shirts? Are you selling them? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, everything is in the works right now for what I'm doing. I got a lot, you know, because I'm coming from before art Before art, I was the winter fresh guy. This oh, is really? winter fresh gum commercial. I did winter fresh. Mm -hmm. So what did you do there? I actually did the call. It was in like 2000 where I um I auditioned and I beat out a lot of people for this role, and I was the main I guy. Um. And I had to say, yo, when the fresh chews, you want to be on TV, here's your chance. Grab your video camera, call up a few friends, make a video that means ice cool breath. Do something cool, and be right here on national TV. It's the Winter Fresh Network, baby. Log on to winterfresh.com and call 186 is cool gum. Holla! <laughs> and you got in it. You got the role. I got the role. And I did a national commercial. <laughs> And I did. That's the, like that's the thing. You just do it. Just do it. That's all. Just don't like think well, overthink. Don't don't make yourself be stopped. Right. That's when I started. I didn't. I didn't go to school for art. I I be I mm -hmm. went to school to actor. You know, I'm an actor. For I'm acting actor. school, you're an actor. Yes. And so art didn't come until years later, but it was inside of me already. That mm -hmm. was my first love, but I didn't know it. What? I didn't know art was my first love. I knew that I wanted to make it to the NBA. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to be an actor, be on TV. I'm in the Screen Actors Guild right now, after and all that. I did a couple of shows. Um, so when art came into my life, it was because of my big brother. Because of that painting I, I did, I paid for him to do, which is a fly painting. And I wanted to make it mine, so I did my version where it still looks like his, but at night it changes. And I came up with that idea, and I just kept going. And art came to me in 2012, and then 2015, um, I did some paintings, and then 2016 came. I did over 50 paintings in that year, and these paintings <laughs> is not small pieces. I'm talking about painting. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, yeah, and I noticed you do like, quite a big pieces too. I'm talking about pages like that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. I love this piece. I'm so so. I did over 50, 60 paintings, and um, in 2017, I had my own art gallery, and I had it for two months. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. And um, did they find you? Did they find you? You had to like knock at the. Well, you had to. Well, present yourself somewhere. Gallery is called Catalyst Gallery in Beacon, New York. And you know they say they say that the first person you got to invest is yourself before anybody can invest in you. I took that and around. Mm -hmm. I put my little money together and I paid for the to to get the art gallery, have it all show. And and I put on a big show and everything and it was for two months. And um then I got That's when I met my my bro, rest in peace, man, Michael A. White. You know, he was an awesome artist. And so he told me, yo, you should come out to this show at the Holland Center in Beacon. I said, all right, cool. But <laughs> that's all. That's all it is. But then I found out about the show because this other guy, Levy, he told me about it. And then I got in. 
And I saw Mike. I said, yo, I'm here, bro. <laughs> you ain't tell me how to get in the show. <laughs> you ain't tell me, Mike. Why am I the show now? So we took pictures. So whole 2017, I was I was doing my thing. And um, I started doing, I, you know, I do my, my, my movie stuff, too. So I, I'm working on a movie called Fat Guys Need Love, too. It's a comedy. It is hilarious. You know, it's about weight loss and everything too. So that's why I'm training right now. Okay. And um, I'm film. I'm still filming this because the road to losing weight ain't easy. <laughs> it's not easy to lose weight. But I learned one thing. My grandmother said to me, "She said, boy, you're saying you, you want to lose weight." I said, "Yes, Granny." She said, "Well, clap your beak." I said, "Granny, what do you mean clap my beak?" She said, "Boy, listen to what I'm saying." You understand? I said, what, God? She said, clap your beak. And she went like this. So, um... That's hard, because you, you have association with food and art. That's not easy. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, <that's> just... <laughs> well you, know, I don't, you know, I don't really... Like, right now, the way I'm training, like, my, my whole regimen is, is no joke now. So, I mean, I'm losing, uh -huh. losing weight like crazy. Like, I'm feeling really good. Um, and I'm staying focused. Um, because health is wealth at the end of the day. So yeah, in 2017, um, you know, my man Mike passed in December. We sh we shot we shot the um we shot the the movie. We was working on it um on the 19th. Yeah, and the, the next day he passed, and that really took a toll on me because I had so much plans for this movie, and it really got depressing. But you know, art and stuff, I have to represent. So I still kept going and stuff. I'm still doing what I have to do. I was going to do so much, you know. Um, and one thing in life is that, you know, you lose a lot of people in, in life. And, you, mm. like, another person, too, is my, my little bro, you know, Roger Can, um, 2020 passed, you know. Ah, and so sorry. I represent, you know, like, I did this piece. I did this piece for him. This is the piece I did for my brother, Roger Ken. Right here. You know? It's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Yeah. And is this, is this like... Use resin? You know? Keep shining. Roger Ken. That's my brother, man. Oh. But... Do you use resin for it? Did you use resin? Is that... That's what you use to cover? To cover? Well, the way I made this piece here... This is this piece belongs to the other side, but mm -hmm. you know I was so much in pain that I broke it because that's how I felt when I lost him. You know when he passed, mm -hmm. I felt broken. That was like my brother. That's my brother, and um, mm -hmm. so I broke it, and then now is like the mending. So I put this piece back together. So even though you're broken, you still got to carry on. You still got to keep going. So that's why I, I dedic this, dedicated this piece to Roger. Roger can. This is the whole like meaning. It's not just a piece. It's a piece with the the meaning, with like yeah. the yeah. story behind. Every piece I do, a story. Every piece, but this piece right here, you know, I did this in commemoration for my brother Roger Can. You know, in life, you have it's hard to carry on at times. I use that as a way to represent, you know, I, I, have, I have to do that for my peoples, you know. You, some people deal with loss differently. Um, I try to take it as I got to represent for them. I have to carry on. I have to be strong. And I have to do, you know, and to make it, you know. And that's, that's why this art thing is big for me because it's 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 not just me. Do you paint sometimes with other artists? Do you do you do pieces together? Yeah, I did. So in the summer, I started painting in Soho because Soho is very historical and they had a lot of boards. Mm -hmm. And I went out there in June and I, and I collabed with a couple of people um, that you know we worked together and stuff. And it was it was it was what it is, you know. Um, it was an experience because you had an opportunity to take your work 
and put it on boards, like boards that's in stores, you know. And that's something, yeah. And it's big boards too. You like it's some of like pretty grand creation. Yeah, big piece that on the building is it like real? Really? That's it's like, yes. It's not tall, for sure. It's tall, twelve feet. You know, ten feet, twelve feet height width. You know, it's, it's oh yeah. I did a piece um um in in uh, on 40th and 5th Avenue um that uh it's at the library right now on 5th Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, shout out to Stevie, you know what I'm saying? Tony Tone. That's an opportunity where I'm able to take my talents to another level, you know, because I want to create bigger things. I want to do bigger things, you know, because my creativity yeah. It just don't stop on, on like ten feet, twelve feet. Don't I? I, I see big. I see building. Yes, so, do you have any ideas before you go to like like you have like general idea before you do that 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 big piece? How you work with that? I I'm the MacGyver. I feel of art. I have an idea of something, but it, <laughs> it come to me of how I'm gonna finish it and get it done. I can I, I create it right there, you know. And you create right on the on the streets. People walking around, and you just do it like close that p place where it's going to be hanging, right? Uh, I um I basically will be sometimes out there like at one two in the morning till till the next day. That's how. Oh. I, I remember one time. So how long you work on them? Like for how many hours? Like straight. Um, I, 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 I know I logged in a lot of hours. Um, just for like one piece, one time, I did more than 15, 16 hours. How many breaks do you have to take? There's no, I just, I just work, try to work through it. Um, you just work. Like that piece, that piece, um, I, um, pretty much did for the, what I did for the library on 40th and 5th Avenue. It took about 24 hours pretty much. My whole thing as an artist, I can't stop until I know it's done. As as you see, it's like there's times where I would just stay up all night to finish a piece because I can't go to sleep and have peace. <laughs> I have to get it done. Do you, you know? do you feel exhausted after the um, like so many hours? How do you feel? Or you s feel, have some feel, kind of recharge? Like 10, 15 pounds straight up. <laughs> 10, 15, 20, I'm 10, I lose weight. True. Doing it that really, yeah. really, my body. I feel like I was in a fight because you know when I fought uh -huh. fight boxing events and stuff. Um, it's it's you don't feel it right then and there, but then when you when you go to sleep and stuff, you like you wake up, you still so sore all over, and and it's like wow, that's how it felt. It felt like I'm in, in, in a boxing match because you got to climb the ladder, go down the ladder. Spray this, spray that. Go over here, go over here, and it's it's a lot of different motions that your body's doing that you're not paying attention to that because you're paying attention to do the piece a certain point on. on. It's, a, it's it's a lot of physical work too. It's a lot of physical work. Yes, you don't understand. Like my my biggest day works like eight hours straight, eight nine hours in a piece. Wow. Never works twenty four hours. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's no joke. You know, there's some pieces. It's more than that. You know. Um, it's, it depends on how large it is because my work is not just like spraying. I don't just spray. It's it's different techniques I'm using and different mediums I'm using that. Yeah, you, you use some. You incorporate uh, some other stuff, uh, some like pieces, deeper materials. It's it's very creative the way you come you, the, um, to do those things. It's very, very creative. Yep. What kind of materials do you like to use? All types. Good for you. Good for you. Do you use art? Do you use resin? Do you feel like, do you use resin? It seems to be that you do sometimes or you I have do, other. Things. I do everything. I do everything. I do. I do. It's just whatever, whatever the piece is calling for. I think that's how I define what I do. It's like, I look at this piece, and the piece is talking to me. You need what? Mm -hmm. You want you want glitter? Okay. Oh, you want something? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just go with what the piece is calling for. I, 
mm-hmm. it's one of those things that when I'm done, I'm just like, again, did I do this? <laughs> you know? You remember how, like, you know, like, first time I uh, noticed your painting was, actually, you had that big painting with a piece in the middle that you stick light in. Did you, there was something like that, like, was some uh, something coming out, like, um, some kind of a box-like thing. Did you stick it light inside in your painting? That, that piece is called a Heart of Gems. Yeah, exactly. Yes, because it's hard. Yeah. And like every piece I have a story for. My imagination, and this, this, is, this is because of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but my imagination goes that far because I thought about the Egyptians. And I thought about oh. the pyramid. One day I will go to Egypt um, to visit because it's amazing. So when I was making that piece, I wanted to dedicate something because in the pyramid, people think of treasures and all that, but that was the whole thing with, with the Egyptians and the pharaohs. And if one if the pharaoh passes away, everyone that served him was locked in there for the afterlife. What's crazy is that when I did this piece, I said, well, let's look at the other side, which is, there's treasures and there's stuff that they have there too, gold and, you know, jewels. And so I said, I'm going to do a piece that's going to be just like the pyramid. But it's Mm -hmm. like straight up, it's pointing this way. And when Mm -hmm. you do the hole, there's a picture within a picture. Mm -hmm. And that's why I put into that piece. And I put lights in there, and I designed it. And that, I just, I don't know how I came to be to make that. It just happened. That was a very, very good piece. Uh, what is it now? Where is it now? What did you do? Like, I still have, have somebody? I still have, still have it? I really put none of my stuff up for sale right now. Because um, I'm working on other things. I work on a lot of different things. But it's still here. I still have it. Um, and that's one, like, one of my favorite pieces, too, because it's... It's priceless for the fact that I use Sawasi crystals, um, and the gem is an actual Sawasi heart. It's a good practice, though, to leave some pieces that you, your own pieces that you can look up for. Like this is the level where what what I wanna like. This is this is my thing. This is my style kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right here is a desk I'm working on right now. This desk is six feet wide. And five feet across. I mean, five feet across and seven feet wide. And um, I'm taking this desk to a whole different level. It has so much different intricacies in this desk. I hand molded this right here. It's the ocean theme. I have I have eels. You know, I got this is this is all special crystals. Little starfish. Little fish here. Yeah. And then, so, that piece, I'm, I'm working on getting sponsorship. So that way, I can um basically finish it. Because what I'm about to design is going to be on a whole different level. So this was a, one of the pieces I did. Yeah, this is interesting piece. Um, you, you put so much... Um diversity in it it's it's like multi um, multi meaningful multi layer too yeah yeah see you you created every every single uh, piece of it was created like and then you put together everything right well, uh, no <laughs> this is just like no? this this piece right here is actually from an amazing jewelry designer you see it right here oh my god yep that's her right there. So you incorporated other people's art. Your this, art. <laughs> this is her earrings. I, I I put my touch to it, but that's her earrings. That's her style right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it there. She's awesome. She's on right now. Look, she sees soul. You see that? She sees soul because she got soul right there. That's her right there. Yeah. So I put all this thing. This is made of porcelain. Uh, I, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I have to give y'all women props because it's not easy. 
I went into the store and got eyelashes, right? And I mm -hmm. think that you get two for one. So I picked up one box and I looked at the box and it said, that's just for one eye. <laughs> I'm like, what? What's going on? I had to get two boxes to get the both eyes. But I'm like, and then it was, it was too much work to put them on. To put the eyelashes on? I said, it's a lot of work. I had to like match it to make sure it line up. And I said, listen, and this is putting on that. <laughs> Inspiration can come from anywhere, anything, any person. But the issue is you have to be open. And a lot of people don't, are not open because people got tunnel vision. So they don't really see the bigger picture. Um, I remember there was a, uh, when I was in school, high school, there was a, a group, I think it was D.A.R.E. There was like a D.A.R.E. group, D-A-R-E. Um, and it was just like a positive group that would help the inner city children to see things differently and put on different acts and stuff like that. So, you know, to help them see another side of life than what they see in the hood. Um, mm -hmm. And one person said, if you look up close to a brick, all you see is that piece of the brick. But if you take a step back, you see the whole picture. And that's mm -hmm. stuck with me. A lot of people um, simply afraid, simply afraid of what is out there. Like, I, I do that artist to artist interview every week. And I'm, I uh, reach out for artists. And you know how many artists are simply, simply afraid of speaking? They like so much in their shells. It's, you know, it's so hard. They're so sensitive um, and so afraid of speaking and connecting. Uh, That's not your case, though. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> have you ever been in this position have you ever had to be like was afraid were afraid to talk to anyone i'm gonna tell you something i when i was about five years old or something mm -hmm. my brother and i were walking down in the street and a lady goes oh she looks so pretty so my brother goes she, he's, a, he's not a girl, he's a boy. And he pulls my pants down. And I guess after that, I wasn't ashamed of being in the public. <laughs> That's it. Yes. I to pull my pants down to show the lady that I was a boy. So what am I supposed to do after that? I'm just going to just enjoy it. I guess I'm, I know I'm a boy. I know I'm a boy. <laughs> you know? And well, the thing is, too, before I moved to the South Bronx, and I was like young at that age, real young, um, I I did my first show, um, acting. I read a script, and I performed at a young age, in front of the whole school auditorium. Oh, see, yeah, that that helps. And and that and I got a standing ovation and everything. I'm I'm never afraid of speaking in front of large audiences. Or, my brother's the opposite. He's he's not he's not like me at all. Like I'm a whole different level, you know. I'm gonna say, "Woo!" He's like calm and reserved, whatever, you know. But me? Well, nobody put his pants down, I guess, you know. <laughs> you know, he's, he didn't have that in his life. Um, the, that therapy. That's a weird thing, though. But yeah, you know. Wow, and you just you just went up, like up, 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 up the hill, not down the hill. I have to say something. One thing I didn't like about the educational system, and to this day, like I'm working on a movie script and all that, is the fact that children learn differently. Their talents and their gifts, how they, how they think and their thought process, you mm -hmm. can't put them in the same class as everybody else. So what they mm -hmm. did to me, because I went from, I was playing the piano, but once I moved to the South Bronx or Tremont Avenue in the Bronx, it was a wrap because it's not, it's not, it wasn't about being smart. It wasn't about being in front of the class and learning. It was about survival. It was about you have to fight every day. That's how it was in elementary school for me. Every day. Mm. It, was, it was fighting. I fought all the time. That's why I think I Why did you have to fight? It was a lot of bullying. Um, that's the whole thing. I mean, not everybody from Bronx. In, that's the whole thing. If you let one person disrespect you, then everybody think they can disrespect you. Then you got to put a stop to all that. That's how it was in the hood. 
If you let one person disrespect you, then everybody think they're going to do that. And then now, no, no, you got to cut that off. So I have to fight. Is that how boxing begin? Yeah, we have to fight. Now, I think I should have been in boxing at an earlier age because I used to fight. And I'm good. At, one time I fought this dude, he was like six something in junior high school. And mm -hmm. I, I knocked him down. I, that was something in me that was a hidden talent. Again, that's why I'm training because I want one pro fight. I want I want one or two or three or four. I just want a, want a couple fights. I, I I really want to because that's another part of me that you know I love. I love boxing, you know. But the thing is, what I was saying is that that educational part they put me in special ed. I didn't belong. To okay, so how did you react? How did did that pull down you down or but that had a does does on on different things because when you in that class I came up with a, a, a little poem that I would stay in my class to watch the smart kids pass because they locked the door and they didn't open it up until it was time to go that's how it was it was like you're in this section and that's what you are and if you tell a kid that the kid will believe that if you keep telling a kid you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, or you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, the kid will believe that. So that's why it's important to only speak positive because a child have different learning curves. And you can't put them all in the same class. You know how I got into special ed? I got into special ed because they gave me this exam with the blocks. Mm -hmm the red and white blocks. And they Ooh. they said, what does that look like to you? I told them a butterfly. <laughs> I told them a butterfly. That was my imagination. But I didn't catch it then. I had it in me, but I didn't know it then. Everyone has a gift. Everyone has their talents. And not everybody's good at everything. The key is, is to know what you're good at, know what you need to work on, and know what you're not good at at all. And work on those things. Um, the whole point of life is growing, getting better. I read this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And one of the stories that stuck out to me was this guy who was a gold miner. He never was a gold miner. He decided, I'm going to try to get gold. I'm going to mine gold. So he got his family together and his mm -hmm. family um, put money up to him get the machinery and everything. And he was going. He was becoming successful again. He was finding gold. Till one point where he was digging and digging and digging and it looked like that was it. So he got he got frustrated. Then this guy, who's a mountaineer guy who lives in the mountains, is passing by, and he says, yo, you want this property? You want this gold mine? Give me this or whatever. It's yours. So the guy said, all right. What the guy did was realize he didn't know anything about gold mine. So what he did was he hired a land surveyor. Come to find out, three feet was a jack pot of gold. That guy didn't know anything about gold mining. So just because you don't know something doesn't mean it can't get done. You you are as good as you are as how you think you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you always got to use this. This right here helped me out because before I was always that type of person that would be reactive. Mm. No, I respond different. You have to think things through because your actions can get you like caught up just like that. And I've been in cases like that. So when you paint in the big streets, when you paint those pieces, um, how people react? Do you interact with people? Oh, my goodness. I did a, a time-lapse video for that tree I made that's on 40th and, um, 50, 40th and 5th Avenue at the library. And... You should see it. It's like so many people pass by. I met so so much awesome people, great people, and 
it's amazing because it humbles me because it's amazing to see people appreciate my work that it touches them. Mm. Because that Did you have any bad reactions ever? Did you have any anybody like weird? Did you have any situations you know, where people Where I live? Cuz I rent I rent the downstairs and and the upstairs. They tell me all the time. Nobody's going to buy your art. They tell me mm -hmm. um your art is I don't understand no one's going to buy you're wasting your time. And who tells you that? My, the people upstairs. People I know. Upstairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they they don't know about art. Are they are they like art dealers? No, they don't. They don't they don't know anything about art. But so they don't know. <laughs> they don't know what yeah. maybe you know. <laughs> I that that is something that motivates me. Because I don't have to prove him, prove to him anything, but it it's it's a it doesn't stop you. It doesn't stop you anyhow. It's just, just like it's something. Oh, but it's a fire. On the way, I can prove. It's a fire. It's a fire. Yeah, because it's a fight too, right? Like, like when he said, "My teeth grind." Okay, okay, you feel that way, well, right? <laughs> to me, that's something that. Hey, that's why I call myself Eyes That Love Art, because Eyes That Love Art. It takes someone to love it to see it first. If you don't see it, if you don't feel it, if you don't be a part of it, how can you know you love it? So that's why I say eyes that love art because it takes your eyes to see it, to perceive it, and love it. Because everybody's perception is different, but perception is key. That's very true. That's very true. Those people upstairs, they probably maybe like realistic art or they don't like art at all. Maybe um, there are some people who who into like impressionism and naive art and personally i think you are some like in the right you know you, you're in the right path that, that you're doing the you're doing the right things um and you the most important thing you enjoy yourself doing like creating art and when you enjoy yourself creating art it's obviously a reflects in your pieces and people can feel the energy that's why i'm i'm, I'm doing a lot of organizing and stuff i'm getting things together I would love to be a full-time artist, but I got to pay the bills. If I don't pay the bills... What do you do? Years, yeah. What do you do? You have to work. What do you do for work? I am an um, uh, 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 advocate for the people representing them and their needs when it comes to medical insurance. <laughs> I see it. You can definitely talk to people. That's for sure. <laughs> no, no. You know, that's part of my experience so hey you know it's 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 um it's a process mm -hmm. it's a process you mm -hmm. you like you art is something that charging you obviously and uh you find in time regardless and paint and it's it's gonna start it's it's gonna you're gonna get there it's gonna happen yeah i mean it's good it's gonna happen you know a lot of times people are successful overnight but it's that, that are successful, but they don't know the other people don't know the years they have to put in to become successful. Yes, years, years, years. So it's like my my teacher said, you know, like they, somebody asked an artist, "How long you've been um, painting on painting that piece?" And he's saying, "Like all my life." <laughs> right. That's it. That's it. I, and I think that's the key, you know. Um, I don't focus on the money. I focus on the vision. I focus on what's coming from inside and how it's coming out. The money will come, but this is something that, like you said, I want people to feel that, that energy around the piece. I want people to feel, because I'm, I'm taking a part of me to create something, you know? And, and the thing is, as an artist, time, is, is the crazy part. Yeah, You have something special in your art using the um, fluorescent light, uh, fl fluorescent colors. It's pretty uh, uh, interesting effect. Um, so you put it in every painting or you try to put it in every painting? It's my whole stamp. My whole stamp is mm -hmm. when you get my painting, it's three in one. Nobody's doing that. Like this piece right here I just made, that piece is crazy. You see on my Instagram that piece, but 
That's my recent yeah. piece I made, and um, all my paintings is like that. I don't just give you a piece that's just regular daytime. Change the lighting, you change the setting, it flips. I niched where I put that together, and that's all from that tiger. When I when when my big brother <laughs> King Fade, I paid him seven dollars for that tiger. I said, "How can I make this mine?" And next thing I know, I came up with this thing. I, I just started doing it. And my pieces, they always go to another level every time. You know. Yeah, I I see that you um, are like I'm a professional artist, and I watch I've been watching you for a while, and I see that you you improving yourself. You're making like the uh, the colors become. Too, I don't know how you do this. I, I don't know how you feel like you've got of antennas or like you know, mm. <laughs> with your cosmic connections. But I see that your colors are actually becoming to be more and more in harmony with itself. Like it's you, you're creating harmonies. This piece behind is like a beautiful piece. Thank I you. love it. And I, um, uh, you're working on even when you're working on bag on bags. I, it's it's not just like something to put together, but it's it's in harm. It's harmony. It's beautiful. Thank you. This is this is interesting. This is you improving yourself. You're growing. It's it's good. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate you so much for that because I just I just let it be me, and I don't try to do anything but but what I do, my style, and and I just came up with a new form of art, which I'm not going to let anybody know right now, but it's it's something that nobody's doing at all. Um, yeah, I don't see a lot of people uh, put it, um, you know, the muralists, uh, they do this, um, uh, mural murals, people painting murals, but it's like more of commercial stuff. Yeah. Um, but you're doing it, you're just making uh, paintings with that, that's, that's pretty interesting. You know, and you put... I actually created something that no one's doing right now. Um, and I'm just working on how I'm going to present it to the world because mm -hmm. it, it came to me in a way where it's... Looking forward to yeah, it. But no one's doing what I'm doing with this, what I, what I came up with. That's my style where I'm always taking it to a different level. I'm always trying to um, just explore, you know? If I was able to go to Mars and paint, I would do that. I'm not going to live in Mars, though, but I'm on that wavelength where out of limits, nothing is impossible when it comes to creativity. That's how art has to be. You have to, like, you, you cannot limit yourself in mm -hmm. art. If you limit yourself, you're in a box, yeah. and you don't have that. <laughs> I'm going to create a change in the world through my art, through my creativity. Um, and, you know, one thing is you never forget where you come from. So I will go back to my hood. I'll go back to the projects. I'll go back and I would empower my people. My mind is a billion dollar mind on different levels of what I know I could accomplish. You know, what's stopping me right now is money, but that's not going to be for too, too long. Because when I have no, no issues with money where I can be creative, and let my creativity do what I do is unstoppable because I write movies, I direct movies, I act, I box, do martial arts. I'm creative, create creative all around. So that's all it is. From you're already unstoppable yes. and you uh, you already won because you have a great personality. Thank you. Please. If this is what you have. This is your lottery. You're great. You're unstoppable. You have great personality. And um, let's see where it's going to bring you. We're at the end of the interview. And I'm going to say that everybody, we, we all can do something very, very, very cool. Some kind of little like miracle. Share this video. He's a unique. He's colorblind artist who can do amazing harmony. Let's help him. Let's share this video, everybody. If we, if we can do this, we can do like tons of good.